Alrighty, I'm sorry I missed yesterday. Very busy. Um, but, just minutes ago, the U.S. House of Representatives passed the first of Kevin McCarthy's many promises uh, to the holdouts um, who, had, who finally came around and voted to make him Speaker of the House uh, this fateful Friday, past Friday night. I said at the time, I don't know if Kevin McCarthy's going to do any of this, but there's one thing, if he does nothing else, if he carries through none of the promises, if there's one thing that he follows through on, I'll say it will have all been worth it. And that's the first thing that they passed today. It was the creation of, give me a second to get this title right, a select subcommittee on the weaponization of the federal government i.e. it's the Church Committee 2.0. Now, sadly, Thomas Massey is not the chairman of this committee, but he will be on the committee. The chairman is Jim Jordan, who is someone that I don't trust as much as Thomas Massey. But hey, you know, it's not like the, the chairman is Kevin McCarthy himself. That would be really bad. So let me just lay out for those of you who are not familiar why this is important and why this is the greatest thing uh, that uh, this Congress or any Congress, you know, has done in a very, very long time, perhaps since the creation of the original Church Committee. Now, the reason why it was called the Church Committee is because of uh, a man by the name of uh, Frank Church, who was the chairman of that committee back in the 70s. Uh, I think there were actually two of them. There was like the, the, the Senate Committee on um, Assassinations, I think it was called, and then there was one other one. But basically... Senator Frank Church led an investigation into uh, the deep state, into the CIA, FBI, and all the other agencies, and found that they were uh, terrible, awful, no good criminals. They were no different than the mafia, and in fact, they were in league with the mafia. You know, there was this old, uh, if you talk to oldsters from uh, New York and other places, they'll, they would have told you, and may, I don't think any of these people are still alive. But the old-timers would tell you, the mob is just a myth. It doesn't exist. You know why? That was disinformation spread by the intelligence community back in the day, you know, in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and probably into the 70s. Because they were working with the mob. They were allies of the mafia. So the idea that there was a mafia was a conspiracy theory. That's how deep the criminality of the deep state runs, um, and they've gotten no better. All that happened when the church committee uh, came about the first time was we found out about this stuff. Nobody knew before all this, and uh, Senator Frank Church was the first one to bring any of it to light. And so he brought a lot of stuff to light uh, about things that had happened in the past, but over the past 50 years, uh, there's been no oversight. There, you know, after the Church Committee, there was the creation of the House and Senate Intelligence Committees, you know, which were supposed to be like permanent Church Committees. And the fact that the House has had to create a new um, version of the Church Committee shows you that the the uh, Intelligence Committees of the House and Senate have not functioned as permanent versions of the Church Committee. In fact, the uh, former Democrat chair of the um, uh, uh, in intelligence community in the House spoke out against the creation of this new committee because he said, hey, you don't want to ask too much you know, information from the, from the intel folks because they might just get mad and stop talking to you. You know, you have to be careful with what you say to them. This is a guy who's – because that's what the intelligence committees um, in the House and Senate uh, became almost immediately. They are uh, the puppets of the deep state. They were completely captured by the people that they're supposed to be regulating, just like every other regulatory agency uh, in the federal government or any other government. The, uh, the you know, the Federal Trade Commission uh, back in the 1870s was immediately captured, so to speak, by the railroads who they were supposed to regulate. Um, but it's more that the Federal Trade Commission, from, the, from its inception, you know, was uh, a uh, uh, creation of the railroads. It was the railroads who agitated for it to be created. Um, and then, of course, the railroads themselves ran it. This is true with all regulation. 
And so the uh, intelligence community committees, even though I don't think that they started out as, um, you know, being literally the invention um, of the CIA and the FBI and all them, uh, they very quickly were able to capture them. You don't get on the intelligence committee unless you're a deep state puppet. That's why Thomas Massey's not on the intelligence committee. But he will be on this new committee, this new select subcommittee uh, on the weaponization of the federal government, which is, I mean, didn't, there could be a worse title. You know, it's to the point. It is a bit wordy. Um, but hey, I'll take what we can get as long as they're effective. And I do trust that Massey, at least, at the very least, as he said on Tucker's show last week, if he sees anything that's worth talking about, he'll come out and say it, whether it's in some official committee report or not. If Jim Jordan tries to censor him, he's just going to come out and say it. I think that Massey would be one, um, like Senator Mike Ravel back in the 70s, uh, who would, um, you know, if told, hey, you can't say this, it's classified, you know, we can't reveal this. I think that he would take the classified document and read it into the congressional record. Uh, the way that Mike Ravel did, um, because there is a uh, uh, there's protection for what um, members of Congress say on the floor. And so Mike Ravel, he took the Pentagon Papers, which you're not supposed to. They were they were oh, that's illegal. It's classified. You can't have them. Daniel Ellsberg going to prison, all this. Um, Mike Ravel made sure that these were public record forever by reading them into the congressional record. And the stenographer had to take it down and this had to go up. Uh, you know, in the annals of congressional history, Massey, I think, will do the same thing with whatever he finds if Jim Jordan uh, tries to stop him. So even though Massey's not the chairman, and that may impact the final report, um, you know, the final report might be uh, a bit uh, whitewashed. This is not going to be another Benghazi committee. Uh, this is not going to be a completely a... Uh, you know, a cover-up job of the real scandal while we just try and blame Democrats and say Democrats are bad, because that's what the Benghazi Committee was. The Benghazi Committee was a joke. Uh, you know, back when the Benghazi Committee was created, I had some faith, you know, in like congressional Republicans. I thought, oh, they're going to investigate this. This was a really big issue. You know, I was listening to the radio live when Benghazi was going down, when the, when the place was getting attacked, when people were getting killed. And I thought, wow, this is a big story. <laughs> this is going to be a big deal. Uh, and then it just petered out into nothing because Trey Gowdy essentially covered it all up while having these big passionate speeches about how, you know, Hillary Clinton let people die. He made it all about Hillary Clinton rather than making it about what it was, which was running guns to Syria. You know why? Because Trey Gowdy supported arming al-Qaeda in Syria. Trey Gowdy is not only an al-Qaeda sympathizer, he outright supports al-Qaeda in their war effort in the Middle East, along with, frankly, uh, the rest of the Washington establishment. Uh, so uh, the Benghazi committee was a way of deflecting people's attention away from that, saying, hey, don't think about, you know, running guns to Syria. Running guns to Syria is not the, bad, not the issue here. In fact, we're not even going to mention that it was going on. Just think about Hillary Clinton. And Hillary played along. She was able to get good sound bites out of it. And she was able to say, what difference does it make? And, you know, that was her, you know, nevertheless, she persisted moment. And so everyone got something out of it. All the political faces were able to capitalize on the situation without actually having to talk about uh, the, uh, the very, very bad details. I, at the risk of sounding silly and naive, I don't think that will be the case this time. Of all people in Washington, if there's anyone who we can trust, it's Massey. Massey is the closest thing in Washington to Ron Paul. Had Ron Paul, you know, been on the Benghazi committee back then, um, I think that things would have been different. Ron Paul would have been honest about the truth, uh, even if Trey Gowdy didn't want to. And I think that Jim Jordan is probably better uh, than Trey Gowdy anyway. So hopefully this select subcommittee uh, on the weaponization of federal government will be like the Twitter files on steroids. That's what we're looking for here because we don't just want the Twitter files. We want the, the deep state files, all of them. We want to see what they've been up to. We want to see what wars they've been starting. 
Uh, we want to see who they've been assassinating. We want to see all of the disinformation that they've been engaged in. And yeah, I guess I shouldn't hope this much, but I would like to see finally they maybe they look into, hey, you know, uh, what did the CIA know about the Kennedy assassination? What did they know and when did they know it? You know, did they did they give did they just give Oswald the money to buy the gun or did they actually go out buy the gun and hand it to him? Or was Oswald just following orders the whole time? Those are the questions that I think we'd like answered about the JFK assassination. I think we'd like to know more about the RFK assassination, the MLK assassination. And these are things that J that uh, Frank Church tried to get into a little bit, but obviously he couldn't get through it uh, entirely. Now keep in mind, um, I mean, the the conspiracy to help the deep state cover up their crimes runs, runs very deep. Um, you know, up and including, uh, you know, Donald Trump. Donald Trump, he knows the secrets about the Kennedy assassination. The Kennedy assassination st statutorily was supposed to be completely declassified by now. Trump went out of his way to break the law and censor uh, the Kennedy assassination um, because he did not think that it should be public knowledge. Trump knows what happened. Trump knows who killed Kennedy. Uh, he knows um, most likely. I can't say this obviously with certainty because Trump censored it. Um, he knows that the U.S. government killed Kennedy, and he won't let people know that because he just thinks that that will break our mythology, and he doesn't want to be the one to do that. Massey um, doesn't have as much um, disrespect for the voters as Trump does. Massey thinks of us like adults. He doesn't think of us like uh, children the way that Trump does. Oh, that could hurt people's feelings, so I can't let them know the truth. And by the way, I'm not the source on this. I'm not pulling this out of my butt. Uh, this is what Roger Stone says that Trump told him about the Kennedy assassination. He would not allow it to be released because he just said that the truth was too horrible. People couldn't be allowed to know that because that would just destroy their faith in America. I.e. destroy the faith, people's faith in the very same people who took down Donald Trump. Now, they didn't kill Trump, but they took him down and killed his presidency. Trump wanted to protect those people. That's how much Trump thinks of you. So anyway, this is a great step. Um, I have a lot of hope for just this committee, even if the House does nothing else positive um, for the next two years, which they probably won't. This, I think, will lead to some positives. So with that said, uh, I will see you folks back here tomorrow, hopefully. <laughs>